What's up everyone, Darkblade here with another Dragon Age Inquisition multiplayer class guide. In this episode, we are going to take a look at one of the high damaging long range classes in the game. The man who brings death from afar, the Archer. Now remember, these builds and guides are aimed for the harder difficulties, mainly perilous. They are also for level 20 characters. The guides will also be divided into must have, optional and defensive abilities, with the rotations and leveling up guides for the class near the end of the video. Remember also that these builds and guides are what worked best for me, and I hope they work well for you. As the archer, you will be playing as Hall, a survivor from the wilds, a woodsman and archer. A Dalish hunter rescued him from a bandit raid when he was a child and taught him her skills. but. He was human and not welcome in her clan. Once he could fend for himself, he was turned out. Hall wandered for years, never quite finding his place. When a beam of light tore the sky, he was drawn towards it, knowing that it spelled disaster, and for once, understanding that he was needed. Now moving on to the heart of the episode, I start by taking the following must-have abilities. First is Longshot and its upgrade Archer's Lance. With this ability, the Archer fires a powerful single shot that deals more damage the further you are away from targets. Longshot deals 200% weapon damage initially, but gains bonus damage if you're 15 meters or further away from a target. The bonus damage is 600%. Longshot also costs 50 stamina to cast and comes with an 8 second base cooldown. Longshot is also a precision detonator, as it can be used to activate cross-class combos. Its upgrade Archer's Lance allows Longshot to rip through every enemy along its path, doing bonus damage to each target it hits. So as you can see, Longshot deals a lot of damage as long as you keep your distance from targets. Also thanks to the Archer's Lance, it means that you have a semi form of AoE. The Archer's Lance does not require targets to be in a direct line behind one another, as the Archer's Lance will ricochet and ping pong from one target to another, as long as there are targets behind your first target. Thanks to this, it means you can do a lot of damage to multiple foes, and even surpass the AoE damage of Explosive Shot in my opinion, making it the better of the two abilities. With this in mind, Longshot is a massive damage dealer and a key ability for the Archer. Just be careful not to pull aggro with this ability, so wait for your tanks or make sure that you can bring down your intended target before they can reach you. The pros for this ability is its high damage capabilities, combined with it being able to damage multiple targets. It also has a fairly quick cooldown, so it can be used often. The cons are that you do have to be careful about your aggro. If you let targets get too close to you, Longshot won't be doing its optimal damage. You also have to be really careful with Archers, with the Longshot and the Archer's Lance effect, especially if you get their attention, as they can deal a lot of damage to you on the Perilous difficulty. With this in mind, sometimes it's best to wait for tanks or attack with your teammates. For the second must-have ability, I go with Full Draw and its upgrade, Stunning Shot. With this ability, the Archer will take a moment to line up the perfect shot but this pays off with a devastating hit that bites even deeper to enemies who are not injured yet. This is a great opener against tough targets or priority targets who need to die fast. The damage of full draw is 200% weapon damage and it gains a further 800% damage if the target is at full health. However, it does cost 65 stamina to cast and comes with a 24 second base cooldown. The upgrade stunning shot allows full draw to briefly knock targets unconscious, putting them to sleep for 20 seconds. This is of course if they survive the shot and are not immune to sleep. Sleep targets will not be able to fight back and gives the archer a form of crowd control. It also allows the archer to set up cross class combos for his teammates. The pros for full draw are its high damage and crowd control and bonus. With coordination you can bring down high risk targets quickly or put them out of action to be dealt with later. However the cons are is that if you use this ability before the tank or your teammates are ready it means the entire room of enemies will be heading your way. It also comes with a long animation cycle and comes with a fairly high cooldown and stamina cost. For the optional ability I take Mark of Death and its upgrade Mark of Doom. With this ability, the archer will mark a target via a throwing dart, after which every hit towards that foe will add towards the mark's power. Once ready, the archer can activate the mark, dealing all that stored damage to the target at once. 
you will be able to tell when the target is marked by the mark of death icon being lit up. You can if you want manually activate the mark by pressing the ability button again for bonus damage. The stored damage is 100% of what you deal to the target during the time that target was marked. The mark lasts for 8 seconds and it has a 32 second base cooldown. It also costs 10 stamina to cast. Its upgrade, Mark of Doom, makes the marked target even more vulnerable. It does this by reducing the target's armour by 20%. So this ability I would refer to as a boss killer. It is amazing for dealing damage to foes who take a lot to bring down, whether it be wildlife, tough foes or bosses. Again this is a good opener when going against these type of foes. After marking a target you have 8 seconds to deal as much damage as you possibly can to targets through abilities and auto attack damage. I would advise though before the 8 seconds is up to activate the mark for that bonus damage that can be devastating to foes. On the easier difficulties you can easily kill a boss with one mark of death. However, on Perilous it takes a bit more. The pros for this ability are its high damage possibilities, making it great for the harder difficulties. It also comes with a bonus of not costing too much stamina to cast. The cons are though that it does have a long cooldown. Also, you won't be using it often against weaker foes who are dealt with quicker by other abilities. The defensive ability for the archer is slightly different because it can be used defensively and offensively. This ability is Leaping Shot and its upgrade Rolling Draw. With Leaping Shot, the archer will dive out of trouble and fire a hell of arrows at foes that are approaching you. Leaping Shot fires 12 arrows dealing 50% weapon damage per hit. If all arrows manage to hit the targets, it deals around 600% weapon damage. It comes with a 12 second base cooldown and costs 35 stamina to cast. Its upgrade roll and draw gives you another bonus. If your leaping shot hits, you use the momentum to do a stronger draw as you land on your feet. This gives your next normal attack the ability to knock down foes with a damage bonus of 200%. This bonus will persist until used too. You can tell when this bonus is active via the bright glowing purple arrow. Now I primarily take Leaping Shot for a defensive ability as it really helps get you out of the way of incoming melee foes. It's a little bit less useful against ranged foes but still can be used in a similar manner. However, this ability can be put into the mix if your other offensive abilities are on cooldown or you need that little bit of extra burst damage. The pros for this ability is that it's a defensive ability that can be used offensively, meaning that you can deal damage whilst getting out of the way of incoming attacks. The major cons are that if you're not careful, sometimes you can leap backwards into foes. So watch your environment and always make sure that your back is facing an open area. Now moving on to talk about the passives, I will cover the mandatory ones that you need to take for this build to work, followed by the optional ones. Passives also give you various bonuses to your base stats. With the Archer you have Dexterity that will increase your attack and critical damage bonus, Cunning that increases your critical chance and ranged defences, Willpower that increases your attack and magical defences, and constitution that increases your health and melee defenses. The first passive in the marksman tree is first blood. With this passive the archer will do 15% more damage to foes who are at 80% of their health or above. It also gives you plus 3 dexterity. Next is cheap shot. This allows your critical hits to tear through enemies armour leaving it sundered for 6 seconds. Sundered enemies have their armour reduced by 20%. It also gives you plus 3 cunning. Next is Bloodied Prey. This allows the archer to do 10% bonus damage to foes whose health is lower than your own. It also gives you plus 3 cunning. Next is Strafing Shots. This allows the archer to move 100% faster whilst firing without sacrificing accuracy. Firing and moving would normally slow you down but this helps counter the speed penalty. It also gives you plus 3 dexterity. Next is Gaps in the Armour. This lets your attack slip past armour to find weak points. It gives you 25% armour penetration. It also gives you plus 3 dexterity. Now for the evasion tree I start by taking Fury of the Storms. This allows the archer 10% bonus damage when he is low on stamina. If your stamina is below 50% then the bonus will kick in. It also gives you plus 3 constitution. Next is Cripple. When hitting a foe in the back, this passive slows them down for a short period. The speed reduction is 50% and it lasts for 3 seconds. 
it also gives you plus 3 dexterity. Lastly, for the mandatory passives, I take Dance of Death. This allows the archer to regain 50 stamina when he kills an enemy. This allows you to restore your stamina easily, especially when going for weaker foes. It also gives you plus 3 dexterity. Now, with the mandatory passives taken, you will have numerous optional passives to take. I like to take the following. Firstly, in the Marksman Tree, I take Opportunity Knocks. Whenever an ally gets a critical hit, the archer will have their ability cooldown reduced by 0.5 seconds. This is a nice passive to help reduce the cooldown of your abilities. It also gives you plus 3 cunning. Next, I take Tricks of the Trade. This passive helps you and your team out by increasing the damage and duration of all status effects. The damage and duration bonus is both 10%. This also gives you plus 3 willpower. On a quick side note, some people like to take Ping Cushion, which is a good option, as it allows consecutive hits with bow attacks to do 5% more damage with each hit. Great for tough foes. The bonus damage duration lasts for 10 seconds until the target is dead or you change targets. It also gives you plus 3 dexterity. However, I don't always take this as I rely on Mark of Death for tough foes. Lastly, in the Evasion Tree, I take Looked Like It Hurt. This allows the Archer to regenerate 10 stamina whenever he scores a critical hit. It also gives you plus 3 cunning. Now the rotation I use with the Archer depends on two aspects. The amount of enemies and the toughness of enemies. If faced with a lot of weaker foes, I start by waiting for the tank, trying to time up a 4 draw shot on a priority target to either kill it outright or to put it to sleep. After which, I follow it up with long shots, leaping shots and auto shots, with long shots being the best option here. If faced with tough foes or bosses, I start by marking it with Mark of Death, following this with a 4 draw, after which you should have just enough time to get one long shot or leaping shot in before activating the mark of death for massive damage. However, if the target looks like it might die before the long shot or leaping shot, then just activate the mark of death to try to kill it. When on the defense, it's just a case of kiting enemies using leaping shot for that extra boost of distance and damage. Now, when it comes to leveling up the archer, you should first go for long shot and its upgrade archer's lance, which should make you level four. Next take Leaping Shot at level 5, after which head straight for full draw at level 10. After, take Mark of Death at level 11, now go for Dance of Death which should make you level 14. After, upgrade all the remaining abilities and take your desired passives which should make you level 20. Overall, the Archer is a high damaging long range character. He should be the one to take down the high priority targets quickly. Enemy rogues, ranged units and wizards should all be on his hit list. He has various straightforward rotations for different enemy situations, so he can easily adapt. The only real issue he may come across is ranged foes and pulling aggro from tanks. This all being said, the Archer is one of the easiest classes I have used on the harder difficulties. In the right hands, he can be devastating. Just remember to be a team player and hold your fire to the right moment. Once your teammates are in position and ready to attack, you will have a better time dishing out damage. This build is hard to use in the single player, as the only real two characters who can use this are Cole or an Inquisitor specialising in the assassination tree. Also with Cole, he is normally used as a dual wielding dagger rogue rather than an archer rogue, so you would have to train him up in archery in order to use this build in the single player. Anyway, I've been Darkblade bringing you my guide to the archer in Dragon Age Inquisitions multiplayer. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.